Take it away. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm mine, and this is Connor, and we're from Station. We lead the product and protocol development um, of our flagship product, Group OS. But before I share a little bit more about what we do for Group OS, I want to share about um, why we build what we build. And at Station, we build to allow and enable um, internet native organizations to mobilize, coordinate, and grow um, value aligned networks. And um, essentially, um, the founding story is that we want to enable more types and more diverse types of internet organization to exist. And in order to for that to happen, we believe that we need a new infrastructure um, for on-chain identity and the way that um, networks attribute values. And NFTs, as Benny has mentioned this morning as well, and many other speakers that have mentioned, um, NFTs have that um, have been in the last cycle have been have wasn't built for um, on-chain identity, but it has been adapted by internet organizations for this particular use case. But because it was um, it weren't built for um, this use case, they so for sh for short for uh, from to truly recon um, being a representative representative like um, pocket for um, our on-chain identity, and this limits the use case to one-off fundraising and basic access control. And that's why we built um, Group OS um, to expand that possibilities for games, protocols, and communities um, on-chain. Yeah, this is just like a sneak peek of our toolkit. And for Group OS, we have a NFT account at, at its core. Um, and for our accounts, um, it's, a, um, it's a gasless and um, expressive user account built on 4337 and 6551. Um, and when combined with our, two, our suite of toolkit, our group OS, we unlock um, new mechanisms and new um, possibilities for um, games protocols to design new ways to attribute values and distribute values in the network. And I'll pass it on, oh, before that. <laughs> These are the, some of the use cases that we have seen um, and we have been working with um, organizations on. Um, so first is interoperable players and universe. Um, so like if you're familiar with like treasure ecosystem, that's something, that's a really great example of like a game in Web3 ecosystem that try to um, promote this idea of like, oh, one character can exist across different universe. And so this opens up more like collaborative opportunities for games, for brands, for um, a lot more like um, developers to work on. And second is in-app engagement and loyalty programs, gas subsidized wallets, or what we call gas pass, and on-chain reputation. And next, I'll pass it on to Connor to give a little bit of a demo of um, what developers can use Google OS to build, and it's also a little tribute for a classic NPC, Pac-Man. Thank you, thank you, Mine. All right, so I have a little demo of Xerox Pac-Man. It's going to look like Pac-Man, but it has on-chain stuff because on-chain stuff is cool. But um, what we have as a basic system for 6551, I'm sure everyone's familiar, we'll have a base wallet that you connect to, and then we'll give you an NFT. That NFT itself has an account, and then within that account, we'll put in a bunch of other stuff. In the case of Pac-Man, we'll be doing a basic like experience like any other game system, and that'll be modeled as an ERC-20. So the first thing we're going to do is distribute a Pac-Man NFT to people and then put other tokens in it as they play the game so that they earn points for good gameplay. So for me, I've already connected my wallet and so I can get into playing. And just to situate you, the board is over there. Uh, it looks like it's working. And we can see my total score. That is an on-chain value of the ERC-20 we've deployed. This is all on GoEarly, by the way. And we also have an indicator of the last saved value on-chain for us. And so what this lets me do is I can play the game, and I can get some score for running around. Let's see if we can kill some ghosts because that's fun. Triple kill, <laughs> got him. Okay, so that was great. Um, let's die. So, I know, sorry, sorry. <laughs> if people wanna play after, my machine's here. I can also give the URL. It's a good time. Um, but notice how our total score has increased but the last save on chain has not. That's because we actually have to commit a transaction for that to happen. Um, because we're not trying to burn tons of gas, we're going to force people to save just like manually. And so this process right here is us taking that value from the off-chain on my local computer and putting it on-chain 
via the ERC-20 minting into the account that belongs to the Pac-Man NFT that my wallet owns. Yeah, so, sorry, we're gonna have to wait for a transaction for a second. Uh, we have a question already? Good question. So to reframe it, how do we protect the validity of the on-chain data that it actually reflects people earning experience for playing the game properly? So this is a trusted setup. So what we have is our computer pings our own API in backend, and then that API is what produces signatures that are then serving as the on-chain authentication mechanism. So you can think of a, a signature is something that we have a, a cloud wallet that we control with our own API and it can produce signatures just like when you log into any other dApp, you do sign in with Ethereum, we produce one of those and then we give that to the user here and then they can bring that to the contract to mint it on chain. Uh, the signature is valid because on chain there's an address that the ERC20 trusts as a valid minter and the signature comes from that valid minter which is then this wallet that we control in the cloud and hold the keys for. Oh, I sorry, I can't hear. Uh, I, I guess this is just a basic API security thing, like how do you post on Facebook? Like it just, the, the our backend trust that the authenticate that the request is coming from our computer, which is in our local front end. And so we have an authentication already set up for that system. I wanna move on for the moment. I can talk to you after if you're worried about the security. But um, anyways, as you can see, uh, we have our total score and our last save have both increased. And if we go to the leaderboard, actually I already have the tab open, uh, we should be able to see all of the Pac-Mans that have been currently minted by people. Uh, this one I was just playing with is number seven. And we can see that my rewards tab here is showing all of the on-chain token balances that belong to this NFT address. Um, note that this address is the TBA. It is not the address of the owner of this NFT, which is over here. And so as we play the game, we can get more XP. We can mint that XP as ERC-20s, and then they reflect live on the NFT's metadata as well. And so the NFT's metadata you can see over here on info is, I guess, 5156. Yeah. So, where were we? So the other thing that we like to do with these NFTs is hopefully connect them to actual dApps. The goal of account abstraction is that smart contract accounts can actually become the day-to-day -day accounts that people use instead of your MetaMask or other private key-based wallet. And so we also have a system that lets us connect to dApps with Wallet Connect. And for this, we're just gonna go to Uniswap. I think we've already done this before. Uh -huh. Cool, so we're going to do another Wallet Connect session. We can copy this link, we can paste it in here, and we can see I have a couple Pac-Mans already. Uh, I'll just do Pac-Man number one, and then Pac-Man number one, which is OX8A32, should be connected to our DAP here. And so something I won't demo because they don't have ETH in this wallet um, or something to swap on Uniswap is 4337 compatibility. So a great feature of using smart contract accounts is you can actually do gas automation programs, which you cannot do with a normal EOA-based account. And so that's also kind of included in the bundle where we help people distribute base NFTs. Those base NFTs come with TBAs. We help people with APIs or other systems distribute more tokens into those TBAs, and you can take your accounts wherever and accrue reputation. So one extension of this Pac-Man example is if we're gonna make a 0x Pac-Man DAP, we would want to maybe have a treasury if we're fundraising for people to play the game by purchasing in-game items, say like extra lives or whatever else you do with games. Then people who are accruing experience can use that experience to show that they are a dedicated player and they should have voting weight on the snapshot whenever we're voting on how to spend treasury funds or et cetera. And so all of that can be shown by having the on-chain data within the TBA and then connecting to something like snapshot with the Wallet Connect integration. Yeah. So yeah, and we have Pac-Man you can play on your computer. Please don't try on mobile. I've not tried it on mobile. Uh, but yeah, and hopefully it's all free, gasless. You don't have to pay anything. 
So I hope that's fun for people. Um, thanks. Uh, so there's one more section to this, which is how do we build all of this for the future of GroupOS? And so we've hit a lot of problems in thinking about how to find the right, abstra right abstractions to model group behavior on chain. So we come, came up with this thing called OX Rails, but it's trying to find universal patterns for evolving on-chain structures. Uh, so to break that down, why do we need evolving on-chain structures? As most of you know, organizations are very messy. They change all the time. The nature of an evolving organization is, like, I guess, a, a fundamental truth to how people work together. On-chain structures are not so easy to evolve over time. If you're familiar, smart contracts are non-upgradable. You have to do a lot of loopholes to make them upgradable. Even if they are upgradable, they are done commonly in a way that makes it hard to modularly change different parts of the system. Uh, and everything is basically treated like resetting the entire OS whenever you want to change one small thing. And so for us, thinking about how a group is modeled, you could think of it generally as a token system and an account system. Token systems are the way you can ascribe value on chain. You can give numbers to people, you can give special numbers to other special people, et cetera. And then accounts are how you can represent identity of individuals and also identity of groups. So as a distinction there, you can imagine 6551 plus 721 on the middle right is what I just showed with Pac-Man. You have a Pac-Man NFT, then you have a TBA within that. A group example may be considered with an 1155 example, say a role system. I have an admin role, as do my co-founders. We have a multi-sig that, that this role entitles us to control treasury for. That multi-sig itself can mount on top of the role system to create the same kind of behavior we would want from a normal multi-sig, except it's based off of existing on-chain token data. So it's a much more uh, interconnected system. And so as you can see here, we have like six contracts going on. How do you connect six contracts? How do you connect it to all the logic that you want? And this is where we arrive at like a modular contract framework. Uh, this is still in development, open source, but there's a lot of names here. All you have to understand is that there are many fundamental patterns to how contracts uh, process logic. And some are helpful to modularize, others are not. And for us, we've arrived at these, I guess, six different design patterns that can help with modularizing logic. So as a simple example, you could consider a core here as the 721 NFT, and it would dedicate a bot account in the cloud as a controller. So like when I minted the points, that was our controller just calling the mint function on our token contract, and that's like a, fund like a, a pattern of permissioning that's pretty basic. Um, I won't go through all the other ones. I'll have to write something about them, but in the works, so as some examples of why this is useful to have a coherent language for designing modular systems is you can compose difficult things much simpler. So for example, one problem we encountered with this demo itself is how do you automate the transacting on chain? Um, you could do it with an EOA in the cloud, you could fill it up with ETH, and then you could keep filling it up with ETH as it keeps getting used. Um, this is actually a great pattern for account abstraction where at the infrastructure level, instead of having one address we trust, we can have a bot account. And that bot account can itself be backed by keys that we use for permissioning. But then the bot account uses 4337 bundlers, the entry point to solve our own problem of how do we pay for gas for like thousands of users potentially without needing to keep top up and have that operational load on ourselves. Another example of this, uh, probably running out of time, but another one I think is more interesting is for tokens. Again, how you can you compose the logic of an organization? You could consider two fundamental pieces of an org, a membership system for identity and a role system for permissions and access. You can simultaneously have different logic, um, say minting for the membership, minting for the roles, and then you could have a self-referential role hierarchy. Like imagine a tree-like stu structure. You have a product team, within a product you have some PMs, you have an engineering division, with, you have many engineers, you can pose a multi-sig, you can pose other things. Uh, and then these roles can control each other, but these roles can also control the membership system. And the role system can control all other token contracts or all other contracts you may have. And so hopefully by modularizing, if we find the right abstractions, we can make it easier to create such logic um, on chain and let it be changeable as well. But that's all we have. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please follow us on Twitter. Join the ride, thank you.